Hello everyone again. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the winning entries from our recent internal hackathon. This demo is presented by Timo Hanke. Timo Hanke is a Bitcoin and internet computer superhero. Um, he's a cryptographer and he devised the ASIC boost system used in much of the world's large scale Bitcoin mining. He was also one of the first Definity team members joining String Labs in 2016 while it was incubating the Definity Foundation and helping me write um, one of our first papers. I think it was called Definity Consensus. So um, Timo's team, which included several other cryptographers, was working on a very important problem. They wanted to make it very, very easy for DAP developers to ensure that user data is encrypted when it's stored on the internet computer. So for example, um, if this system were used in open chat, you could be sure that all your chat messages were stored in encrypted form on the internet computer. And um, you as a user could only access um, you know, messages that you'd sent or have been sent to you. Um, something like IC Drive could ensure that uh, the files are encrypted on the internet computer. Um, if you had a DeFi app or a wallet, say, you could be sure that um, all, all the transaction history was, in, was encrypted and so on. I mean, you know, arguably just about every conceivable dApp um, could, make, could make use of this uh, amazing feature. Now, um, what's important is that um, the encryption of user data needs to be linked to whatever internet identity handle the user is using to authenticate themselves in the DAP. Now, um, this is actually pretty challenging because um, uh, first of all, you've got to um, work out where to store things like the private key used to encrypt the data and think about how that's maintained um, while preserving all of the convenience um, that internet identity gives you. Now, um, internet identity, of course, is an anonymizing blockchain authentication system. It's pretty revolutionary um, in, in its capabilities, and it allows you to authenticate yourself um, to a DAP by using any, any device that you've added um, to your identity handle. And you can have lots of identity handles if you want. So you can do things like you can add um, you know, the fingerprint sensor on your on your laptop, um, the Face ID system on your phone, or a YubiKey or a Ledger. And, um, you know, typically any any one internet identity will have several devices um, added to it. And that's obviously important, uh, not only for convenience, because you might want to access, say, open chat both on your laptop, laptop or on your phone or your wallet on your laptop or on your phone, um, but also for reasons of security. You wouldn't want to just have um, one device like your laptop um, uh, connected to your internet identity. What would happen if, if that laptop got lost? Now, um, behind the scenes, of course, uh, this is uh, depending on um, uh, the, the, the standard called WebAuthn and um, secure hardware features. So, for example, when you, you know when you do the fingerprint sensor and on, on your laptop, what's actually happening is there's a secure chip called a TPM. Um, that's uh, that holds some key pair that's related to your internet identity that's actually now signing some transaction or session um, key or something like that. So uh, as you can probably see, um, you know, creating this functionality where something like open chat or a wallet can sort of seamlessly encrypt your data for storage on the internet computer inside of a smart contract while preserving all of the incredible usability features that um, the you know, anonymous, uh, anonymizing blockchain authentication system that is Internet Identity provides you with it, it, it is, is challenging. Um, obviously, though, the potential of uh, solving this problem is enormous, and that's why this demo is so super, super exciting. Um, before proceeding, I will mention, um, for those wondering, um, that actually 
uh, smart contracts on the internet computer, they're called canisters, already provide um, some privacy guarantees. So smart contracts on the internet computer maintain data inside persistent memory pages. Um, smart contracts on the internet computer use a system called orthogonal persistence. So essentially, you just write smart contract code and then it runs in these persistent memory pages. Um, now, those persistent memory pages um, are only available on machines, these special node machines that the network has chosen to replicate the specific smart contract in question. And soon we will turn, well, through a proposal on the network nervous system, soon we'll go through, hope to turn on a, a, a hardware feature that will cause those uh, memory pages to always um, uh, remain encrypted. And uh, that will mean that even if someone, you know, no provider has physical access to the node machine and, 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 and can open it up and so on and so forth, it won't be possible um, to, to, to gain access very easily at all to, to the uh, underlying data. Now, um, hardware protection, of course, is improving all the time, but it will never, never be as secure as, you know, pure, you know, solutions that are based on encryption only, because of course, you know, encryption is, um, derives its soundness from mathematics, not hardware. And, um, you know, the guarantees provided by mathematics are much stronger. And that's why, um, you know, this demo is so exciting. Um, you know, there are many, many dApps out there that would love to be able to tell their users um, that they're providing these strong privacy guarantees and all of their user data is being stored in encrypted form on the internet computer blockchain. Okay, so without further ado, um, let's proceed to watch this hackathon winning demo. Okay. So I see Vault. Think of LastPass on the IC. A vault for all your passwords and secure nodes stored on the IC, accessible on all your devices just by logging in with your internet identity. Sounds easy, right? But with end-to-end -end encryption, all data is client-side encrypted in the user's browser. No part of the IC can see any clear text. Interesting, but now comes more. Despite this end-to-end -end encryption, we have seamless device syncing through the internet identity. As you know, for example, QR code scanning just to add a new device from your normal messenger or something like that. No, you, you have already done that kind of stuff when you set up your II, right? So you should not have to do it again. And you don't. You can decrypt the vault on any device on which you can log in with your internet identity. <clears throat> that's the magic of the vault. And that's not trivial. II alone doesn't give you that because II doesn't allow to share a secret between devices. Wow, I must think. Enough to win a hackathon, right? We think so too, but we have even more perks for you. Now, listen to this. IC Vault is built on a service called Keysync. Keysync is an open application. Uh, it's open, it's generic, it's an open service. And any application, such as, for example, uh, Open Chat or IC Drive, can use it for their own E2E encryption to encrypt chats, files, and so on. Even Plug Wallet can use it. For example, if you set, if you install Plug Wallet on a new device, then you have to re-enter your mnemonic phrase, currently at least, but not with Keysync anymore. The phrase can be synced seamlessly in the background. Adding a new device with Keysync is as simple as logging in once with the internet identity. And in case you asked, different applications are isolated from each other. They cannot steal secrets from each other. And the vault uses deterministic encryption for the keys in its internal key value store, which makes it searchable on the canister side. Let's say you have a huge vault and you only want one entry, then the search happens in the canister and you don't have to download the entire world. So now let's skip to a, to a demo. Share a different screen.
here, I have two windows. On the left window is one device, a phone, let's say. On the right is a laptop. Um, I'm already logged in with the II. Now I register each of the two devices. What happens is on each device, the public key pair is created and the public key is uploaded to the key sync canister. Now one device has to seed the whole thing. Seeding means a shared or to be shared secret is generated. It is then encrypted for the public, various public keys and uploaded to the key sync canister. If the other oh, device now it's already seeded, it notices that and we handle the race condition that's there. Um, now, syncing does two things, downloads the encrypted shared secret to the device and um, decrypts it. And it also re-encrypts it for all other devices that have maybe registered in the meantime. So now if I do the sync on the other device, it should download and decrypt the same shared secret. And now I can use that shared secret to go to the vault and enter, for example, some entry into the key value store. The application name is the key here. The pair of user and password is the value. And internet computer seems to be slow, but maybe on the other device, I can already refresh my view of the vault and the same entry should pop up. So the key sync is really about syncing between various devices. It is not about syncing between um, or sharing between different users. That of course can be done as well, but it's part of the application. And here we see the same entry became visible on the other device as well. All right, thank you.